Right, handball. How, uh, is it even worth discussing? Well, short of having a pair of gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, put, put it one way. And it's, even with a pair of gloves, that's a pretty what, good zip. What's been really interesting reading uh, some of the articles that have been written after this is that people are criticising Graham Potter for not being angry enough, for not coming out swinging, for not criticising well, the referee, referee enough, because that's what the Chelsea fans desire, a bit of heart, a bit of love. So I, I'm really interested to get your point of view as ex-professionals if you want that from your manager. Well, I saw his interview straight away after it on, on NBC, and he w I, I was surprised. I don't know if you, if you saw it, but he came yeah. out and went, well, it kind of looked like a handball. And, and he's, that was him actually, in that press conference, which was in the media room, that was more animated than he was yes. in the earlier one. Yeah. And bearing in mind the situation that he's in, bearing in mind the amount of pressure that he's under and their results and where they're sitting on the table, you did feel that he'd want, almost want to throttle somebody, but he, I, 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 I don't know. But I mean, that's, that's clearly not his temperament. It, it's not. But who doesn't he it uninspire me if it's but a player? If you're a player, does it make any difference that he's not coming in, bawling and shouting and saying, "Ah, oh, everyone's against us. We have got to go out there and prove them wrong." But maybe he was doing that in the dressing room. I mean, you he can't just imagine mm -hmm. he is that. No, like, can I don't. You? I don't. But I, I was surprised that he wasn't more aggressive in his reaction to the refereeing. But I, 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 I'm, I'm a little surprised, but I'm, I'm not at all bothered by it. And I think, had Chelsea been in a better position, I think this should have been the perfect response in a similar way that Arteta isn't, you know, kind of throwing his, his, his toys out the pram himself, given, given that decision in a way that Ten Hag was kind of accepting of, of the Casemiro red card when where, where, where others would have, would, have, would have kind of gone off, gone off the edge. Um, the only difference be between Chelsea and those two clubs, obviously, is Chelsea's position. But I, I thought... Chelsea played well, particularly in the first half. Um, and that should be, or well, seems to be, Graham Potter's focus. I, I have no real issue with him not kind of ranting and, and, and raving, certainly for the cameras, because even if it is done for the cameras, that's for the fans, and, and that's not going to that's not going to have an impact on the dressing room. But from a fan's perspective, Don, does he need to play the game a little mm. bit more, show a little bit more passion for a fan base that's already questioning his appointment? He won't, Dan. He doesn't like confrontation. I know one or two lads who I've worked with at the Premier League, and they've played under him. He's not that type of manager. He, it's just not in his makeup. I think you'd, I think you'd see him sort of fake it if he did. Whereas I think if that was Jose Mourinho, you could imagine Jose's response after the game. He would have went ballistic and one or two other managers. That's not in Graham Potter's makeup. It's not his style. Um, so I think if he just come across gone ballistic, I think you'd sort of see through it. I think the worrying thing for Chelsea fans, more than the, the Graham Potter lack of rant, is the form that they're in. I mean, only two wins in the last 17, uh, 13, sorry. That's worrying form if you're a Chelsea manager when you spent... £600 million, £300 million in January. To have that record, two wins in 13, that puts you under a little bit of pressure. I know what you're saying about the... I understand I, what you're... I find it interesting no, because... because but every, then, like then, All then, the big managers... You think the successful managers, uh, like Klopp, we've seen Klopp lose his temper, of course, Pep Guardiola, Ancelotta's been snarky at referees in the Conte, past. Conte, who you said know, he doesn't. You know, they Mourinho. carry this kind of edge yeah. to them. And I'm not saying that... Graham Potter can change himself to try and make himself yeah, yeah. and pretend that he is someone that he isn't. But can you be a top-class manager if you don't have that edge? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, put it another way, we're not going to judge... Oh, God, no, it's, this isn't on... Po we're not no, judging I, Potter you know, solely on a post-match interview. No, no, so, so, he's, so he's going to be judged. I mean, the fans can holler and complain and do whatever they want, but ultimately... Everybody will be judged on performances and, and results. Uh, I think that's just how he is, and, and maybe that's how he deals with his players in difficult circumstances as well. We know Tuchel would have him on, you know, Conte, Mourinho, all these ma managers. Yeah. We're not putting him, Potter, in that bracket for any stretch of the imagination. He's got a million miles to go before he reaches the level of those guys. But, yeah, I mean, I was a little surprised, I have to say, at his reaction to the, the quite clear... Incident. Bear in mind that a couple of VARs that were correct against his team mm -hmm. that resulted in goals being chopped off. Uh, you just felt in his position there might have been something a bit more. But ultimately, it's about results. But, but, but to, to that point, you compare it to managers who've managed at big clubs before they are now and, mm. and have kind of worked their way into or worked their way into having enough and, and then be being allowed to explode over whatever it is. But 
Potter, having been where he is, dis decisions like this don't carry as much gravity um, as they do or as with, with Chelsea Football Club. So this is still kind of new to him in, in that regard. So I'm, I'm understanding and accepting in uh, life. That's just the way you are, Jack. That's, that's the way I am. <laughs> uh, last point on this, Don. <laughs> is it easier for referees to give decisions against managers who have the same attitude as Potter as opposed to managers like we've seen Sir Alex Mourinho, who everyone uses as an example because they know they're not going to get hauled over the coals? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'd like to think not. I don't think so, Dan. I mean, when you were chatting there about different managers, I was thinking of Ancelotti at Real Madrid. I've never really seen Ancelotti. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've never seen him really go ballistic. He might raise an eyebrow, but that's about it. Well, he does um, that anyway. Maybe it's the younger breed. Of, yeah, so I mean, so it might be the younger breed of manager. People like Graham Potter and Eddie Howe. They're different. They're, they're, they're not made up like Mourinho or Thomas Tuchel or Conte. It's different, different personalities. So I'd like to think the referees wouldn't referee any different just because of your your character and your personality? I just think it's bad on the referee in front. It's nothing to do with uh, yeah. any individual. Yeah, I mean, that's the... the more you say, I mean, yeah. come on. Uh, he's basically done, so check that as Fabianski's job for him, hasn't yes. he? I mean, he's dived on the ball. <laughs> How between the match official, who's actually refereeing, and uh, I think Don said it was Neil Swarbrick back in yeah. back at base. Who's the head of VAR? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he's, he's, it's one of the sim most simplistic decisions you're going to have. If, yeah. if somebody said to you, listen, can you just be VAR for the day? And you picked a decision <laughs> that yes. was going to be non-controversial yeah. to yeah. take the pressure off. That was the one. Uh, do, you know what, do you know what David Moyes said? Good save? Didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about Chelsea overall. Flashes, like, nice mm. goal, obviously, Enzo and Jao Felix. Some good link-up, particularly in the first 20, 25 minutes. And then it just kind of went, yeah. Ugh. And then Potter said himself, as we made changes, it looked like, you know, introducing each other, uh, introducing people to, to their teammates again. But, but I suppose, you know, this link-up here and the lovely it's side. Lovely. Bit, it was yeah. great. And the way he finishes was fantastic. Uh, keeps himself just on side. It's a great ball as well to pick him up. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, the first half hour of this game, I thought West Ham were going to get, were in for Hammond. a good five or six. I, I really did. I didn't mean that. Yeah, Sorry, I just yeah, threw yeah. it no, out. It's yeah. just, just natural. No, I didn't I, mean that. I, 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 no, I, I really did. And then, and then all of a sudden, West Ham just somehow got themselves in, in, into the game. Michael Antonio had, a, had, a, had an effort well saved by Kepa. And from there, once that happened, from there, it was fairly even. And then West Ham got the equaliser. Rightly so. And, and after that, the, the second half, it was not a whole lot to tell, take between the two. So given the first half hour, I, there couldn't have been a greater contrast from Chelsea's perspective between that and the last hour of this game. Uh, Don, is it just a case of it doesn't matter who's in charge when you've got so many new faces <clears throat> coming at the same time? It's an almost impossible task to get them to click straight away. Um, I don't think so, Dan. I think when you see the job that Thomas Tuchel come in after stepping in from Frank Lampard, he won the Champions League. So I expect more. Yeah, but he, he, he I had, thought they were brilliant. He didn't have the same situation, though, Don. He didn't have a whole new team for no, us that team and 30-plus squad. True. I mean, I, I, like Shaka, I watched this game today and I thought for the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I thought Chelsea were irresistible. I thought it was a couple of offside goals that went in West Ham's favour, which they were offside, but I thought Chelsea are going to cruise this. And then I was watching the game with a pal of mine and it was 1-0. And I thought, if you can get to sort of an hour and you're only 1-0 down or 1-1, I never feel as though Chelsea have got it in them towards the end of the game to push for the win. You know, it's almost like they need to be two or three clear and then just relax and play the nice football. Everything's a little bit pretty because they're going to get the win. When they've really got to push for it, I'm not sure it's in their locker yet. Not with Kai Havertz leading the line. They've not got that prolific striker. They've got beautiful players in and around him. But I never feel as though they're ruthless enough. And it might take a little bit of time. But I just watch them and think, I'm not sure you're ruthless. I'm not sure you've got that. You know, I work with Michael Owen, for example, and he keeps telling me, he said, strikers have got to be ruthless. In front of goal, you've got to have that, you've got to have that killer edge where you're going to score two and three every game or look like you're going to score. And I watch Kai Havertz. That's not in him. He's a number 10. He's a beautiful player to watch like Xiao Felix. You know, we said when they signed Xiao Felix a couple of weeks ago, when you watch Jao Felix as a player, I love him. He's one of my favourite players in Europe. But when you watch his output and look at his numbers, he's never scored more than 10 a season. He's not had more than 10 assists a season. 
So the output for some of them is just not there. But that's not... Yeah, that's would, not Potter's fault. That's though, not it? Potter's fault, I would imagine, because I, I don't imagine Graham Potter went... Well, he certainly he was, he, he was landed with Havertz, he was landed with Aubameyang. I don't imagine he's been landed with pretty much most of these players. Yeah. Not to say they're not good players, there'll be those out there who say, well, you get on with it, and that's pretty much what he said after the game. The interesting thing will be the patience aspect from, from the board, the ownership, because it's probably going to take some towards the end of the season and the summer and a whole pre-season training to, to filter all this out in the washing. And I, I just don't... I, I couldn't answer that question, whether he's going to get that and whether, even if he gets it, he can turn this ship around. I, I, that, those are all questions that still have to be answered, but certainly at the moment, it's kind of mediocre at best, apart from the start of this game. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.